So one of my friends asked me the other day why I enjoy trying to convince skeptics about the existence of the other side so much. And I said, because I was one, I can appreciate their point of view, but I still feel like the grass is greener on my side of the fence. So I feel like the worst thing I can do is leave a skeptic to their skepticism, which is why I will take the time and effort to try to convince the skeptics. So I decided to create this video essentially complaining about the roadblocks that I hit in relation to trying to convince a skeptic. Number one, number one uh, experience. This has to do with me wanting to literally take everything that I have personally experienced from being possessed, having spiritual overlays, channeling demons, channeling um, positive entities, negative entities, people deceased loved ones, the whole kitchen sink. Because what I experience is, is very real and, and physical, very physical symptoms to that. So I really do want to take this world of experience and just hand it to people. And it frustrates me that I can't do that. You're not seeing the clairvoyant images that I'm seeing. You're not sensing the clairsentient feelings that I'm getting. You're not experiencing anything that what I'm experiencing. So it is frustrating for me that I can't just hand you my experience. So that's number one. Number two, all you skeptics out there, oh, this was something that I learned that just pissed me off to no end. The other side, all about self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe something is impossible, then it is impossible for you. You can't do it because you have a mental block. So I'm sitting there trying to help you connect with your own personal team on the other side, also known as spirit guides but you can't do it because you don't truly believe it's possible. And unfortunately, that is an aspect of the other side. That is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you can't do it, you really can't because nothing, nothing ruins your connection to the other side like doubt. So if you don't have the courage and confidence to get in there and really focus your mind and try hard and truly believe that you can, it's not gonna happen for you. All right, number three, you are closed down. You are sitting there at that dinner party with me and you're staring at me with your arms crossed saying, okay, read me. I can't read you because you're closed down. Your energy is collapsed. So your energy centers are all shrunken down. And so I'm trying to get in there and read you. And I can't because you're closed down. You're not open to being read. So you're actually blocking me when you're doing that. Um, now another thing along those same lines is if you are mean to me, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna piss me off. So if we're at that dinner party and you're being mean to me in front of a group of people, I don't wanna read you. You're pissing me off, you're annoying me. And so bam, I'm not gonna be able to connect with the angelic realm because the angelic realm is loving and peaceful and calm and happy. So I'm not energetically compatible to connect with them because you just pissed me off. So that's another issue. Um, number five, this is called cock blocking. This is when I am reading you and I'm tuning into the other side, trying to get information for you and the other side cock blocks it because you're asking questions like, is my wife cheating with who? What's the deal? And they don't want to answer those questions. They don't want you to know what's going on with your wife. Maybe it'll hurt you. Maybe it won't benefit you in any way. Maybe it won't bring you any healing. And it's not something you need to know. It's not something that's important. And suppose the other side instead wants to focus on how you can improve communication within your marriage. So they will purposely cock block the information. And then of course the skeptic's reaction is, ah, you suck, you don't know. When really the other side is, denying you that bit of information. Um, okay, and then number six, I came across this before. Um, party, party tricks. Uh, I'm at a party and I made the mistake of mentioning that I was talking to Joan Rivers soul earlier that day. Um, there was a special on TV about her in memoriam uh, with fashion police. And so I was talking to her soul during the show. And of course, I stupidly mentioned that at a party and they said, okay, we'll channel her right now. So I tuned in and said, Joan, do you wanna show up? And she said, I would show up if Melissa was standing next to you, but 
I'm not a party trick. So that's another thing the other side is very clear on is, Christine, we're not here to feed your ego. We're not here so that you can show off. We're here to bring healing and to help people. So that's another thing. No party tricks for me. No showing off. Um, number seven. This is another one that's really, really tough. Um, I once had a psychic tell me that I was never going to talk to this guy again that I, I was dating. And I said, oh, really? And that is just so set in stone that I'm never going to talk to this guy again, huh? Mm, what about free will? So went home, picked up the phone, called him, hung up the phone. There you go. There, I talked to him. Oh, you were wrong. You were wrong. Free will. Um, I can tell you what things look like right now and like how things are set up to happen right now. But if you choose a different path, that path disappears. That's not going to happen. Um, I personally have seen the other side create the most intricate, beautiful, wonderful, and amazing tapestry where they want to bring two people together to bring each of them healing to their hearts. And this relationship will just <laughs> bring them so much personal growth and development that it's not even funny. And it's like this beautiful, you know, tapestry that the other side has created. And all the people have to do is come and spike the ball that the other side is set. And for some reason, because of free will, doubt, fear, pride, ego, whatever, the ball never gets spiked. And so that whole beautiful, intricate spider web that the other side, you know, woe for these people just floats away in the wind. So that's something that as a professional psychic medium, I see a lot and I have to deal with because free will in the end of the day does rule the roost. Um, but if from a skeptical standpoint, they will immediately point the finger at me and say I was wrong when really it was a free will decision that changed the outcome. Um, the future is constantly changing. So that's why it really is dependent on people's free will and their decisions. So that is uh, pretty much all I felt like complaining about today. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> in the meantime, take care and be well. Thank you.